Hello everyone, this is Emily speaking and I'm going to be talking you through atrial septal defects in the paediatric section of Crash Course Medicine. First of all, we're going to be going through some multiple choice questions so we can see what the baseline knowledge is before we start going through the revision slides. So first of all, what do we already know? Question one, is this a cyanotic or an acyanotic heart defect? A, acyanotic. B. Cyanotic or C. Both. Remember to think about whether it would cause a left to right or a right to left shunt. The answer is A. A. Cyanotic. That is because it causes a left to right shunt. Question 2. What type of murmur does ASD create? Is it A. Early diastolic, B. Pansystolic, C. Systolic ejection, or D, machine-like continuous? Think about if it's in systole, diastole, or continuous. The answer is systolic ejection. Question three. What is the gold standard investigation for diagnosing ASD? Is it A, chest x-ray, B, pulse oximetry, C, ECG, or D, echocardiogram? The answer is echocardiogram. An echo allows you to directly visualise the atrial septum and the size of the ASD. So, this is what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about what are ASDs, the symptoms and history, investigations and differential diagnosis, clinical examination and OSCE tips, and then we're going to summarise and go back over the previous MCQs so we can see what we've learnt. So, what are ASDs? AS, an ASD is an opening in the atrial septum excluding a patent foramen ovale. It's an asynotic heart defect because the blood pumps from the left to the right side. This is because the pressure is higher in the left atrium than in the right. There are four types of ASD, ostium secundum, ostium primum, sinus venosus and unroofed coronary, coronary sinus. Let's talk about how the atrial septum develops. First of all, the septum primum grows down, creating the ostium primum, which closes as septum primum goes further and fuses with the endocardial cushions. You can see it growing here to form the ostium primum, which is the first opening. Secondly, a hole appears in the septum primum called ostium secundum. This is the second opening. And thirdly, the septum secundum grows down next to the septum primum and the hole created there is the foramen ovale. The septum forms first, then the whole ostium is created as a result. Primum comes before secundum. Cyanotic versus acyanotic heart defects. So why are left to right shunts acyanotic? This is because the oxygen-rich blood which is in the left side of the heart is being forced into the right side because of the increased pressure in the left side. This means that oxygen-rich blood is still being transported around the body. Other causes of acyanotic heart defects are ventricular septal defects and persistent ductus arteriosus. You may also see acyanotic heart defects with an outflow obstruction such as pulmonary stenosis, aortic stenosis or coarctation of the aorta. Cyanotic heart defects were more likely to be right to left shunt and you will see a cyanosed patient upon presentation. These will normally be the tetralogy of fallot uh, or transposition of the great arteries. Let's talk about symptoms. Most patients will be asymptomatic and so this won't be discovered until later on in life. Some children may have recurrent chest infections. However, most on average get diagnosed from the age of four with finding an incidental murmur or later in life when they have arrhythmias or dyspnea. ASDs can present in two main ways, either as a child via an incidental murmur or symptomatic presentation before 40 years old with arrhythmias and dyspnea. Here are two examples. See if you can pick out the key buzzwords of these histories. A six-year-old girl is brought to the paediatrician for routine well child care. She's doing well, keeps up with peers in dance class. No apparent distress, but subtle right ventricular lift. Her second heart sound is widely split and doesn't vary with respiration. She has a soft 2-6 systolic murmur, best heard along left upper sternal border. 
The second history, a 45-year-old woman seeks treatment for frequent palpitations. In her mid-twenties, she became slightly short of breath with exertion. She's recently been seen twice in hospital emergency for atrial tachyarrhythmias. She has 2-6 systolic ejection murmur at her left upper sternal border, which radiates to her back. Another important thing to note is that 25% of patients with an ASD also have Down syndrome. Let's talk about what investigations we can do to diagnose an ASD. Pulse oximetry, an echocardiogram, you can visualise the defect directly when you use an echo. Chest x-ray, usually there aren't any findings on the chest x-ray, however you may see cardiomegaly. An ECG, which can exclude a right bundle branch block for adults that are having arrhythmias. Differential diagnosis. Patent ductus arteriosus. And with patent ductus arteriosus, the patient will normally have a bounding pulse. This is a pulse which is really strong and powerful, and it feels as though your heart is pounding or racing. With ventricular septal defects, they normally have a hollow systolic murmur. This is typically a high-pitched heart sound, which continues from the first heart sound until the second. Pulmonary stenosis. This normally has a click after the first heart sound and right bundle branch block, which can be distinguished using an ECG. On clinical examination, normally with auscultation, you will hear a systolic ejection murmur, best heard at the left upper sternal border and often radiates to the back. There will be fixed splitting of second heart sounds, which means that the split is during both inspiration and expiration, and it does not vary with inspiration. So what tips can we give you for the OSCE? When listening to murmurs, differentiate when you can hear them, whether they're systolic murmurs or diastolic murmurs. This will really help you differentiate between the different types of heart defects. Know the difference between cyanotic and acyanotic heart defects. Remember the grading system for murmur classifications. The ASD murmur is heard loudest over the left upper sternal border. So murmur grades. There's six grades. The first three have no thrill, the last three have thrills. They're quite easy to remember. You just need to get used to them and practice. Grade one is very faint and not heard in all positions. Normally, if it's a grade one murmur, then you'll need to be somebody with a lot of experience in order to hear it. Grade two, this is soft and it's heard in all positions, so it's a little bit easier to hear. However, you still need to be quite experienced. The third grade is loud, but there's no thrill. The fourth grade is loud with a palpable thrill. The fifth grade is heard with the stethoscope partially off the chest and there is a thrill. And the sixth grade is heard with the stethoscope completely off the chest and there is a thrill as well. So, what have we learnt? Let's go back over the multi -choice quest multiple choice questions and see whether we've learnt anything. Question one, is this a cyanotic or an acyanotic heart defect? It's acyanotic because it's a left to right shunt. Question two. What type of murmur does an ASD create? It's a systolic ejection murmur. Question three. What is the gold standard investigation for diagnosing ASD? It's an echocardiogram because you can visualise the atrial septum and the size of the ASD to determine whether treatment's necessary. Well done guys, we've come to the end of the slideshow now. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please come back for some more interesting facts and revision materials on Crash Course Medicine.